Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Tired of Being the Bigger Person? She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than that of an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomy, or men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers, her traces of the smallest spider's web, her collars of the moonshine's watery beams, her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film, her wagoner, a small gray-coated gnat not half so big as round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. Romeo and Juliet, Act One, Scene Four We are raised to turn the other cheek, to be a good sport, to take a joke, to be the bigger person. Well, to hell with that. Am I right? That's the recipe for today. Be the bigger sucker. Alas, any bit of kindness or patience is seen today by too many people, it seems. That kindness is viewed as a sign of weakness or vulnerability. Now, I prefer not to think that way. You don't have to be mean or cruel. But you do have to stand up for yourself today. There's no high road, only the low road. Work on neutral. Don't be the best. Don't be the worst. Be the middle for now, where it's safe from the insanity of the extremes. Don't be the bigger person. Be the equal person. Maybe try that. Yes, you can be equal without being petty or vulnerable or the professionally put upon. Why do others insist that we play fair while they deconstruct all the rules to make them the winners of all time? And you see this all the time, all around you, in sports, in politics, and in friendships. And in and around the college campus and in every relationship. Do right. Be right. Become the moral thing. But for what reason? Why must we alone behave, behave while those around us are de-evolving the world around us into the dark and impermissible abyss? Meanwhile, the cruel, the malignant, and the low-lifes all around us are not held to the same standard of moral curation as we. They are never punished, and if confronted for their sins against humankind, well, they become insulted and agitated and violent. Wrong becomes right, the fact becomes the fib, the truth becomes the lie of the original sin. Well, some believe the reason we behave is to keep the social core intact. No society can exist without the constant care of the warp and the whip of the fabric of moral responsibility. Laws are broken. People are killed. And yet, here we stand, with our Constitution rotting in our hands, struggling to read the fine print of what it means to live in a free democracy. A free democracy where everyone around us, above us and in power, are cheating their way to the kingdom. And yes, we are tempted by bad behavior. 
those who break rules and those who impound the mercurial, have no responsibility beyond the self. Not self-sacrifice or self-improvement, but the true and the manner of utter selfishness. And we, we, the ones who care, the ones who are left behind holding up a higher standard of behavior for everyone huddling around us for shade and trembling beneath us for protection from the rain. We are left bewildered. Bewildered as our ranks diminish, while those around us cash out on faith and deconstruct believing into misunderstanding. And there, there they take the dark road. They want the smaller belief. They do not object to the tinier rule of self-preservation, knowing that it belongs only to them. Only to them above all other comers. And that is the right test of living a modern life. Why be truthful? Why be good? Why become the bigger person? Why, when life is rigged against the blissful and the self-immolating curated, our reward cannot be winning or overcoming, but it must always be one of perseverance, of keeping up the status quo, keeping it fair and open and important for us now and in the future. Oh, we shall not be diminished. Ah, we shall be called names. We shall not have greatness thrust upon us. But greatness will be stolen from us and then used against us. And so we shall, and so shall we must, toil on into that good night, disguised under a tarry sky, knowing there is light in the heavens that we cannot see unless and until the real darkness descends. And we shall know our good deeds through our right works, and our joys shall become us, and our indulgences will behoove us, all in allowing others to arrive before us, even when we are delayed. To allow our goodness to be thefted from us is to surrender all decency to those who only have faith in money, and those who only believe in the jurisdiction of the objectification of power. If we become them, then we, the us of us, are lost, and our effort to overcome is made quaint in the failure as we fall from the waterfall and into the pit. If we are not the defenders of moral neutrality, then we never have to choose between corruption and superiority. We can choose to not do human harm to each other just by being the one person who stands up between the middle of two extremes asking that we stop while practicing caution and ubiquity in being. It is just too easy today to be totally bad and completely pious. But the real challenge today to living is in being able to mediate the bad with the good and to mollify the right and the wrong, all in the effort in order to preserve and protect the moral center of who we were born to be, the proper person, the equal idea, the fair dream. We are become the complete conception 
of kindness and caring that rules and heals all petty destruction and pinpoints the moral scraping to reach the safety of the higher ground. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.